Welcome back to Edgewater Avenue. Today we have a long overdue tutorial and that is how to make a swimsuit non-reversible style. So in this video, I'm first gonna talk about modifying my patterns and whether or not that's necessary when you're making a style non-reversible. Then I'm gonna show you how to make a non-reversible swimsuit three different ways. First is going to be 100% on the sewing machine. Second is going to be a mix of a serger and a sewing machine. And then third is going to be a sewing machine, serger, and cover stitch. I do suggest you watch all parts of the video or at least the first section that's 100% sewing machine. I do end up building on concepts that I said in the first one. And so it might be a little bit easier to follow along if you watch that one first. So let's get started. I make sewing patterns with primarily reversible slash concealed seams methods. Some people call it seamless style, if that rings a bell. Reversible patterns are different than regular swimwear patterns because they use different amounts of negative ease. So what is negative ease? A garment that has negative ease is intended to stretch to fit the body. So things like swimwear and active wear, they use negative ease because they're intended to stretch in order to fit you. Reversible patterns have less negative ease than regular patterns because two layers of outer swimwear fabric has less stretch than an outer fabric and a lining. And long story short, that means that if you make a reversible pattern, non-reversible style, there might be some fit issues just because of different negative ease that was intended versus what ends up being a final result. Now I know that a lot of my customers make my patterns as is, no modifications, and they do it non-reversible style. So today I'm gonna test that theory. I'm gonna try three different patterns with no sort of modifications. And at the end of each, I'm gonna do a review on the fit and see if there's anything that I would change. But if you do want to be the most correct, you will want to make some adjustments specifically on the horizontal axis. One other note on modifications is I'm using a different method than usual. And this method requires a fold over. My patterns include quarter inch seam allowance, but with a fold over, you're really getting closer to three eighths allowance. So if you want to be extra careful, you can add that extra allowance into the pattern. But like I said, I'm just gonna make these patterns as is, no sort of modifications, no nothing. And it's just gonna be an experiment and we're gonna see what happens. This channel is all about being beginner friendly and approachable. And so although this isn't the proper way of doing things, I'm gonna do it anyways. So now let's move on and we're gonna start with the sewing machine method. First up is making a pair of Roxy bottoms entirely on the sewing machine, non-reversible style. I've cut my pieces and I'm using two layers of regular swimwear fabric. You can use regular swimwear lining instead. Just be aware this is going to stretch more. So again, there's another area where you might want to adjust the pattern. And again, there's another area where I'm not going to be adjusting anything. Match your fronts with fronts and backs with backs right side together. Then use either a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch to sew both of the sides as well as the gusset. These seams are not intended to stretch, so a straight stitch is safe, but if you prefer a zigzag just in case, then go right ahead. I'm using regular polyester thread for this. Mine is from Guterman and it's the Mara 120 all-purpose thread. Keep in mind there is quarter inch seam allowance included in the pattern. So you just wanna make sure you're stitching at that quarter inch line. If you added extra seam allowance, like I mentioned, then take that extra allowance into account and adjust your seam line as needed. So now that the sides and gusset are attached, we're going to first flip the outer piece to the right side, then insert the lining piece into the outer piece. Keep in mind that the lighting piece is still inside out. So when you insert one into the other, wrong side should be together. Using pins as needed, clip together the leg holes and the waistline. Next, we're gonna sew these and we're gonna use a basting stitch, which is a long straight stitch. The intention with this basting stitch is to use it to keep the fabric together so that in the next step, we can have an easier time adding elastic. But the basting stitch will not stretch, so you do need to make sure you remove it before finishing the piece. Once you've basted both leg holes and waistline, it's time to get your elastic out. This is quarter inch rubber elastic that I'm using. So in reversible swimmer, I don't stretch the elastic when I'm sewing. That way the final garment will lay flat. But in non-reversible, it is standard to stretch the elastic. So I'm gonna do just that. 
I've seen that an elastic reduction of one to 3% is a good range. This time I'm gonna be doing 3%. What this means without any sort of jargon is that I want my elastic to be smaller than my seam and that's gonna be smaller by 3%. So that means that while I'm sewing, I'm going to be slightly stretching the elastic. And this time we're going to specifically calculate the amount of elastic that we need and we're going to cut it beforehand. Now, how do you calculate 3%? One way is to measure the length of the seam with your elastic by placing it on top and essentially tracing it around. Then take that same piece of elastic and put it next to a ruler to get an actual measurement. Mine was 23 and a quarter inch for the whole leg hole. From there, take the measurement and multiply it by 0.03, or if you're doing one or 2% reduction, you'll multiply it by 0.01, 0 0.02. The number that results is how much length you're going to take out. So in my case, I'm going to remove 0.6975 inches. Now take the original measurement of the seam, subtract the reduction, and boom, that's how long your elastic should be for that seam. In my case, I cheated while I rounded and I just went with 22.5 inches to make it simple. So trim your elastic to that length. If you don't wanna do any math, I know it can be really confusing, then you can just eye it. A lot of people do that and they're really successful and I am gonna do it that way later on in this video. Now that we've determined our elastic situation, let's sew it on. This time I am gonna use a zigzag stitch and you can sew your elastic in a loop beforehand. I didn't do this for my first seam, but I ended up going back and doing it for the rest because it really helped me make sure that I was stretching the right amount while I was sewing. So place the elastic on the lining side and zigzag it onto the leg holes and the waistline. I used a stitch width that was as wide as the elastic and I found that that made the best result. On my FAF machine, that is a 6.0 stitch width. When using a sewing machine instead of a serger, I recommend also using a tight stitch length. This way the zigzag is capable of stretching more. Mine right now is at a 3.0. Now our elastic is attached and there's just one step left. Fold over the seam into the lining side so the elastic is fully covered. Now again, using a wide zigzag stitch, sew down the seams on both leg holes and the waistline. This goes for all the methods I'm gonna show you, but when you flip the seam and you sew, you really wanna make sure the fabric is tucked tightly around that elastic. Otherwise you'll have puckering and it's gonna look off. It's also much easier if you stretch while sewing, just enough to where the seam is laying flat as it's going through the machine. And then one other tip I found is you want your zigzag stitch to come down far enough inward that it's tacking down the raw edge from the fold over. I found that when I was sewing too close to the outside, my seams ended up rolling up. Trim any excess threads and that finishes your Roxy bottoms. I'm super happy with the fit of these, so much so that I'm not gonna be modifying the pattern if I make them non-reversible in the future. Now we're gonna be using both a serger and a sewing machine, and we're gonna be making the ranger bottoms. The first steps are all gonna be the same, except I'm gonna use an overlock stitch to attach the sides and the gusset. Again, inserting the lining into the outer piece, I'm gonna use my basting stitch for the same reasons we did previously. This is optional, you can go straight to the next step. Now that it's time to use the elastic, however, I am gonna be using my serger for this. You'll want to do the same thing you did before by determining how much of an elastic reduction we need. Last time I did all the math and this time I have a good idea of what 3% is. And so I'm gonna be using my elastic foot and I'm gonna tighten that foot until it gets to a good amount of stretch. You can of course do the math instead for a more precise result. I'm using a four thread overlock stitch as well as my elastic foot to to sew the elastic onto the lining side of the leg holes and the waistline. So the elastic is on and the final step is the same as last time. Using a zigzag stitch, you'll fold over the elastic into the seam and then top stitch to finish it all off. One final note that might be obvious, maybe not, is doing things non-reversible. You really do wanna have matching thread. 
I only have black and white thread because I've been doing concealed seams for so long, but I definitely need to make a trip to the internet store to buy more colors. So here's the final result. Once again, I'm very happy with the fit of these, no modifications, and I love them. The final method we're gonna be throwing in our cover stitch into the mix. And this time I'm gonna be making the Georgia top without a band. With this method, you can use any combination of the machines I'm gonna be using. Just customize it based on what you prefer. Because of how much I love a basting stitch, I am gonna be using all three of my machines. So sewing machine, serger, and cover stitch. All the first steps are the same again. Sew the two straps and the two sides together using your serger. Then I'm gonna use a basting stitch to sew the neckline, armholes, and band line. Call me lazy, but I liked the last method of just eyeing the elastic tension. So I'm gonna use my elastic foot again to sew the elastic onto every seam I just basted. And here's where we make a change. For the fold over, instead of zigzagging, I'm gonna be using my cover stitch. Now I have to be honest, I have almost no experience with a cover stitch, so I don't have a ton of tips or instructions. But I will say that this step in terms of technique felt very similar to using a zigzag stitch. So I'd say the same tips of slightly stretching and making sure that the fabric is tightly tucked, those ones are gonna apply here as well. One other note, my baby lock evolution, which is my serger, it happens to convert into a cover stitch machine, which you'd think that would be super convenient, but for how much I use the serger specifically, it actually ends up being more of a pain having to convert the machine over and then convert it right back. And most importantly, for the price of the Evolution, it's really expensive. And for that price, I kind of wish I just got two separate machines. Granted, I do have the space for that. So if you're short on space, then having a machine that can convert could be something that's really useful for you. Once you're done stitching the armholes, neckline, and bottom line, you are all done. As much as I rag on the cover stitch, it was my favorite way to finish off the seam. Not only because it was way faster, because the machine is so much faster than a regular sewing machine, but also because the cover stitch has the most professional looking finish. So again, this is the third pattern where I didn't make any sort of modifications. And again, I'm really happy with the fit. I'm not gonna be modifying my patterns. So hopefully that was a decent overview on how to make non-reversible swimwear. This way is much easier than reversibles, but I do love the feel and the look of concealed seams. One thing I will say about non-reversibles is they are much more secure than concealed seams. Reversibles tend to be slidey and kind of fussy sometimes, whereas non-reversibles are much more secure. And if you're looking for something that won't end up being a thong by the end of the day, then non-reversibles might be it. Regardless of what method you choose, Edgewater Avenue patterns are the way to go as shown today in this experiment. So if you like this video or you wanna show some support, head on over to edgewaterav.com where you can shop dozens and dozens and dozens of swimwear patterns. And if you end up using the methods I did in this video, tag me on Instagram at edgewaterav. I love seeing what you do, the modifications and stuff. So do that. Hello. I'm supposed to be at dinner three minutes ago. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.